Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about CSS specificity. CSS specificity is kind of a difficult word for some people to uh, pronounce. I'm sure you're going to be great at it. So it is specificity, CSS specificity. Somehow I can pronounce it relatively well. So I'm going to say we have a section within the uh, markup. Uh, this time I'm going to create a section. And I'm not going to provide anything here. We are going to talk about specificity. It's very important. And I'm going to create an H1. I'm going to give it an ID. Title. Uh, let's say JavaScript Bootcamp. And let's create a paragraph that has a class. Class of para. So you saw the image shortcut, right? So when you, whenever you want to provide a class, the syntax for it is a dot, right? So dot, then the name of the class. So you're going to say para. And I'm going to say uh, basically this text. I'm not going to type it. Basically that text. So what is CSS specificity? The CSS specificity specifies, I mean, ironically specifies, which CSS property has to be applied if there are contradicting CSS properties. So you need to keep that in mind. If there are contradicting, so that contradiction is an important part of it. What do we mean by that? So uh, the highest specificity goes to inline styling, which is 1000. So no matter what you do, you will never be able to overwrite a style uh, when that style is given in line inside the HTML file. We have talked about inline styling, internal and external. Inline is the worst practice you can ever do. So the worst crime in CSS is providing inline CSS. That is the worst one because it has the highest specificity and you cannot change that in the future. It's going to be headache. So the way that you can apply inline styles is style. And then within the realm of these double quotes is the realm of CSS. It's all CSS. So that's why you can see all of these hundreds of properties in here. It's all CSS. Let's say we change the background color to 666. Let's save that. So we have this right here, right? And it is applied on the section. So I'm going to grab the section. I'm going to keep this open. Uh, I mean, uh, there is something that I should probably mention as well, that whenever you're working, you're trying to understand CSS specificity, it is uh, better to use the Firefox developer tools. So I'm just uh, Firefox browser. So I'm just going to grab the Firefox. Usually it takes longer than Chrome um, because Firefox actually tells you why that rule has not been applied as opposed to Chrome. I mean, that's unfortunate. The Chrome's developer tools is lacking. Whenever you're working again with, um, uh, with um, this is my Firefox developer edition. This is very cool. Whenever you're working with HTML and CSS, it is highly recommended to just uh, work with Firefox. So cool. So cool. So we are going to go to inspect element. Here it is. So we have our elements. We have our developer tools. And the bottom, these are all the CSS styling. So I'm just going to put it on the bottom so it is very much visible. So for as Firefox, you're going to have three tabs. So one is going to show the uh, styles that you apply. The This tab on the far right is going to show the computed ones. And we should not get too technical about it. So I'm just going to say, um, let's grab that section. And for some reason, you forget that you have provided it with a background. And you say background. This happens a lot. If you're wondering, okay, this is never going to happen to me, it will happen to you, even to you. And that this is going to be really frustrating because you have like 2,000 lines in your CSS and you forget that you have... It, it tends to happen. I mean, you should not feel bad about it. It's very normal. That's why we teach specificity because this is a normal phenomenon. And you say, okay, okay, this is not being applied. This is not working with me. I'm not learning CSS and all that, uh, like giving up stuff, which you shouldn't say at all. So what I'm going to do here is when I save it, for some reason, 
the section is not changing its background color to lime. And you can see it's been crossed off. I'm going to zoom in for you so you can really understand. So this, is, this has been crossed off. What is the technical computed? It says RGB 102, 102, 102. Where is this coming from? It is coming from our HTML. It's coming from here. So if I change it to RGB, let's change it to RGB. We can see that it is 102, 102, 102, 102, 102, 102. This has been crossed off. This is the cool thing about Firefox. If you come in here, it says filter rules containing these properties. It means that there is another rule that is um, uh, like is um, stronger. What is the word? I kind of lost the word there. That is that takes precedence. There we go. That takes precedence over this, this rule. And, and, and when you click on it, it is going to take you to that rule. So this background color, this is the rule which takes precedence over this one. That's why I'm telling you use CSS, use Firefox Developer Edition for pretty much all HTML CSS. You will never regret it. So this is that's uh, the reason that you can change you cannot change it is because inline C inline styling they have a in a a degree a strength of one thousand worlds. IDs, so on the, in the second level we have IDs, so that's why I provided the H1 with an ID. I'm going to grab it, I'm going to say title, let's say font size 55 pixels, let's save that. You can see it's gotten bigger and that is normal. And now it says where this is coming from. So it's coming from 5.css underscore specificity.css, line number what? Line number 10. So if you take a look at it, it is line number 10, this title. Now, in case you forget that you've provided it with some styling and you say, Chuan, come on, buddy, uh, go to font size, um, uh, I don't know, like uh, 40 pixels. It's not going to change. Why? Because uh, if you select that, this H1 title, uh, font size title, is this H1? Yeah, it is H1. It's not being applied. The reason for that not being applied is because we have an ID. So IDs have 100. Classes, attributes, and pseudo classes have 10. Elements, uh, selecting HTML using their elements or using their names and pseudo elements, which, which I'm not going to cover, they have one. So you're working one against 100. Of course, 100 is going to win. Now, you have to keep in mind that these styles, these rules, they have to be of the same thing. They, have, they must have the same property name. Otherwise, the specificity has no meaning in here. Specificity only refers to any style, any contradicting set of styles that is going to take, uh, in which one style is going to take precedence over the other one. That's the whole idea behind specificity. And that's why you should understand specificity. So if you have classes like paragraph, I'm going to grab the class dot para. And uh, let's provide it with a color of white. And if I set it to white, you can see it is white there. But if I come down here, if I say paragraph color blue, it's not going to change. Why? Because white has more precedence over that. Blue doesn't have that much precedence. You can see that this H1 is now here. If you click on this funnel thing, you're, it is going to take you to the rule which takes precedence over this one. That's the cool part, a uh, cool thing about um, Firefox DevTools. Now, let's talk about element selectors. So for element selectors, I'm going to create another element. Let's say anchor element. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to say I read more. I'm going to change it to oh. So we do have a read more button uh, anchor element there. Now let's say you select it using its element name. Element name is A. It says text. Uh, I'm just going to give it a font size of 15 pixels. Let's save that. It's just go 35 so it is bigger 
uh, you can see it's bigger right here and uh, let's select it here as well now whenever two elements I should I should tell you this as well whenever two selectors have the same amount of uh, specificity and when you declare them the element sorry why why am I keeping element I'm gonna rephrase myself so whenever two CSS rules have the same amount of specificity the one which comes last is gonna take precedence so this anchor element copy that put it like let's say way down here and in this one you say font weight 100 pixels both of them have the same specificity but this one has been declared after this one so which one takes precedence the one which comes last so if you save it this is 100 there we go so if I reload the page this has been crossed off because it comes from line 26 but this one comes from line 30 so whichever comes last is going to take precedence in case you were you were wondering about this okay what if both of them have the same amount of specificity the the, the whichever comes last is going to take precedence so let's say you have this title and you provide it here as well now the only way to beat this title is I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a trick first I'm gonna apply this so I'm gonna say font size um, 110 let's just save that you can see it has been applied there is one trick however that you can do to outrun or outmaneuver this ID and what is that trick there is something in CSS and that is whenever you use a class or an, uh, an ID you can prefix it with the name of its element as well and there is uh, I, I, you know what I'm, I'm gonna try to explain it so you are not confused with the descendant selector so what is the element name for this h1 it is h1 heading you prefix the ID name with the element name now the specificity of this is going to be increased to 101 let's save that it is being applied let me take a look at it I've not actually checked this before so let's see if it takes precedence and yes it does so theoretically it did take precedence so if I come to h1 you can see that uh, the one which is on line 34 takes precedence uh, over the one which is on line 38 and on line 10 even though this is in the middle even though 38 comes after 34 why did it take precedence because of that h1 so technically the specificity of this selector is no longer 100 it is 101 so 101 is greater than 100 this is somehow this is one way you can beat an id but still it is uh, very much like ugly to try to beat an inline styling just go ahead and remove it from there don't try to beat an inline styling it's gonna your code is gonna get ugly now what is this that I've done here and what is the difference between this and an and let's say a descendant selector for that I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that this h1 has an ID with a name title so all these three parts the ID name the ID symbol and the element name all three of them refer to one element if you provide a space here what does that mean it means that that space is a descendant selector what do I mean by it it means whatever comes after the space is a child of whatever comes before the space do we have a title an ID title which is a child of an h1 I mean do we have that in our markup let's take a look at it no we do not have it so this is not going to apply on the h1 because we are actually saying we I have an h1 element and I'm gonna use the descendant selector and this ID title is a descendant through this space of this h1 which which is not which is not accurate at all therefore this is not going to be applied but when you remove it you remove the space aka the descendant selector you basically say I have an h1 element that has an ID and the ID name is title and is that true yes I have an h1 that has an ID and the ID name is title this is the difference I'm not gonna explain it again I'm sure you have gotten the idea 
here. So this is all about CSS specificity and how you can work with it. It's very cool and you have to understand it. This is how you can outmaneuver uh, like IDs and classes as well with very simple selectors, very simple tricks. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you're going to see this as well. Uh, this is actually considered a good practice because you're trying to specify the element as well. So when you, whenever you're creating like a big application, my suggestion for you is to go ahead and um, to prefix the name of the uh the class name and the id names with their elements so you really know what is happening this is recommended for beginners to intermediate level developers for advanced developers if you are an advanced css developer what you actually do is you provide the kind of id that exactly specifies the nature of the element upon which it has been applied so if you're if you're trying to get started this is a good way to really understand this relationship if you're an advanced, it's you can you can not do it, uh, and that's cool as well. That shows your level of professionalism. With this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.